So today is the day that I'm gonna take you guys on a tour of my selling room. Recently, I mentioned to you guys that I have spent some time definitely cleaning, but organizing and um, really just getting everything in its proper place to make it really easy for me to um, use my sewing room and really I should call it my craft room because I do sewing in here I do Cricut stuff in here. I store all my knitting stuff in here I don't really knit in here, but I store all my knitting stuff in here um, and so I Thought that it would be fun to take you guys on a tour of some of the things that I've done that make it easier for me to use and How I've done some of my storage and things like that. So I'm gonna take you on a tour and then once I'm done with that, I'll meet you back here and wrap up with you. So if that sounds interesting to you, then hang on. Okay, here we go. We're walking into the sewing room. I'll give you one big general sweep. And now I'll walk you through from corner to corner. All right, so after I come in and close the door, then I have my ironing board and my iron hanging off the back of the door. And you can see here, I've got a few garments hanging there. I've got um, the three Project dress -a girl dresses that I've finished. I still have one more to make. And then I've got my um, wide strap maxi hanging there because I'm in the middle of um, adjusting it so that it will fit. And then, all right, so then if I sweep this way that trash can is actually full of scraps and i thought i bought a trash can big enough to fit all my scraps but you'll see in a minute that i did not so not sure what i'm gonna do there um, but that's what i've got for now and then i've got my huge tv so my, when we moved into this condo, my husband decided that he wanted a 70 inch TV for the living room, which meant we needed a place to put this one. I have no idea what size it is, probably 50 something inches. Um, and so I was like, well, I like to watch YouTube while I'm sewing, so let's put it in here. And so that's worked out well. Um, we, uh, this TV stand didn't go with the furniture that we, Put in the living room so I brought that in here too so it gives me a little bit of extra storage as well um, those plastic bins there are um, some photo storage which I haven't done yet but I have a ton of old photos old family photos like generations worth that I need to scan and organize so that I bought those for that and then I've got storage in here, which I haven't used yet. And storage here, which I haven't used yet. And then you can see my workout mat, which is right in front of the TV, which works out well. Then I've got my uh, floor mirror. What do you call those things? <laughs> a, a floor mirror. Um, I bought this on Amazon. I just thought it was really pretty with the wide wood frame. Um, and I did, <laughs> I made quite a few hashtag sayings that are in my workout group. And my goal was to put them all over the wall above the TV so that I saw them as I was working out. Or if I wasn't working out to remind me to work out. And I put one up and then decided to test and see how difficult it was to take off the wall and it's kind of a pain in the butt so I think instead of putting them all directly on the wall I'm going to find like a big uh, maybe I'll find some poster board or some foam core or something and frame it and put all the um, hashtags on that instead of putting them directly on the wall so right now I just have the one I won't uh, say out loud what that LFG stands for um, Okay, and then here in the corner, I've got a basket with um, some PDF patterns that are not cut or traced yet. Um, once I am ready to make a pattern, um, I actually cut the individual pieces out to the biggest size and then trace them. Um, just because I have so many of them, like to find a place, since 
PDF is the only type of pattern that I, or the majority of the patterns that I buy. I wouldn't really have a place to store them all rolled up like this. Um, I find it more difficult. So they stay here until I'm ready to make them. And then once I'm ready to make them, I cut out the biggest, like I cut around the whole thing and then I trace my size and I fold all those pieces up and put them in a folder, um, in an envelope. And I'll show you that in a minute. So that's my PDFs that are not cut yet. And then I have some batting here. Um, I had bought this because my goal was to um, quilt my Molly jacket. And then I decided not to because I wanted to get maximum amount of wear out of it. And I just thought quilting it would limit how often I could wear it down here in South Florida. I do still want to do something quilted though. So I'm glad I bought it. And then in this box are two throw pillows that are just the, um, the insert. And my goal there is to sew some pillow covers for my sofa. And then I've got this storage ottoman down here that's currently empty. And then we've got this cubby um, that I put just books and various and sundry things here. On the top is um, a storage thing for some of my Cricut papers. And then that pretty thing there is um, a cover for a essential oil diffuser. This thing here is, is what I use, sorry. This is what I use for filming and for taking pictures. Um, I can, it's, sorry, it's hard to show you what it does and hold the phone at the same time, but this thing telescopes up. So there, I just telescoped it up for you. So it can go anywhere from as low as it was to this height. And it has these clips right here that hold the phone and you can flip it any way that you want. And if I wanted to overhead tutorial, then I just flip this down and this over, and then the, the camera kind of hangs over the edge there. So I can do an overhead tutorial. This is what I used for my tie-dye um, when I showed you how I tie-dyed. So this thing is really handy and that the thing that holds the phone actually has a, a light on it. So it has a remote. I have not used the remote um, so I'm not sure how that works. So yeah, that's my, that's my filming studio. <laughs> um, then I've got this fancy steamer, which I barely ever use. And then we get to my sewing desk and you'll see <laughs> there's some more fab. Uh, those are scraps that didn't fit in the trash bin. And you can see, I do have a handbag there. That's actually um, my crossbody that I've worn for several years. <clears throat> and the handle broke when I was, let me see if I can show you. The handle broke when I was on staycation, so I just kind of knotted it on there so I could keep wearing it. But you can see it's very well loved. It's super soft, buttery leather. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think I can reuse the leather at all just because the pieces are so small. But I kept it because I thought, there's a lot of hardware on here that might be reusable. So that's why I saved that. And that just went on my fabric step, my fabric scrap bin. And then we've got my sewing table. So I've got an, uh, an overhead light. Honestly, I have so much light in this room that I have not yet needed to use that. <clears throat> Here's my serger. I've got it set up with one cone of variegated thread and three whites. I'm thinking of changing them all out to variegated. Then I've got my beautiful little pin, magnetic pin dish. You can see the magnet on the bottom that Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room made for me. And my cup, taking it one stitch at a time that I got from Heather at Textile Tailored Thoughts. Then I've got my little, my glasses that I need anytime I need to thread my machine because the, the little magic threader doesn't work like it should. Then I've just got a wooden uh, thing to hold all of my rulers and I keep that back at the back. 
Um, and then my sewing machine, which is, you know, a very entry level sewing machine, but it's kind of a beast. Um, it has 50 stitches. Um, it has, I think, nine, eight or nine buttonhole stitches. I don't, I only use one of them. Um, it's got a drop in bobbin. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I made those um, jeggings several weeks ago and there's the point where the back yoke meets the left um, leg panel and the right leg panel, that point that meets there is several um, layers of thick faux suede fabric and this machine went through that without any trouble. So I definitely feel like it's a good entry level machine. I will say the stitching is not super beautiful. It's not bad. But um, I have seen other um, people whose stitches look so beautiful and professional. This one's not quite like that. Um, so again, it's great for entry level. It's helping me like improve my skills, but at some point I am gonna wanna upgrade. Then over here, I've got these cork boards that I'm just using as a stand right now. Um, and I have another um, overhead a phone holder that I um, thought might be useful for if I decided to start doing some tutorials. Um, I, you know, I don't know if this one's better or the other one's better. I haven't tried them both out yet, but I have that one if I need it in the future. Then in the corner here, I've just kind of got some things dumped. The thing in the bag is a tripod for a camera that I never use. Um, that is my what do you call that? Um, you, it's, it's a big flywheel that I use to wind my yarn. And that's just the box that it should be in. And then I've got a ring light, which I barely ever use. And then this is a hem, a chalk hem marker that I've not been able to figure out how to make work. I've tried it once and it just blew big, huge puffs of chalk on my skirt. So I didn't find that to be useful and I haven't tried it again. All right, and then you can see, I just have a um, coat hook hanging on the wall. It's just hanging on a hook, a uh, command strip hook. And where I hang all of my tape measures. And I, I actually got that tip from somebody else that was doing, I've, I binge watched a lot of sewing room tours and I got that idea from somebody else and I really actually like it because it it keeps the um, kinks out um, that you get if you roll it up into a little circle. All right, so then we've got my other table. This one is my cutting table. And you can see I've got a lot of crap on it right now. So these are the um, things that I made with my Cricut, my hashtag sayings for my um, workout program that I will not be putting on the wall. <laughs> um, and then I've got this mat cutting mat. I will tell you, I had a different cutting mat that didn't take up the whole table. I think it was, because this table is 63 inches, and I want to say the other mat came from the end to about here. Yeah, it was probably 40 something inches. Unfortunately, I melted that one <laughs> by um, ironing on top of it with my ironing mat, and the heat went through the ironing mat to the mat. So I had to get rid of that one. And I thought this one would be great because it filled most of the table. I don't like this one as much as the other one. The other one was self-healing. This one, I can feel all of the cuts in the mat and I don't love that. All right, so then here I have my notebooks. This is my planner that I use for planning out my videos. You can see here, September is super full. Um, and then this is my notebook that I use to write notes about each of the videos that I'm going to make. And I put, um, I just kind of write out a, an outline of what I wanna talk about. And then I leave space to include um, timestamps for where I'm gonna insert cards and um, you know, make notes of if I need to link to somebody else's channel because I was inspired by them, things like that. 
Um, so that's my uh, one-two punch for making YouTube videos. And then this I just bought, and I love it. I haven't used it yet, but my goal with this, I've wanted to make a, I've wanted to have a makes, um, I don't know, a record of all my makes, and I've just never figured out what the right way to do it is. And I saw this journal, my husband and I were in Barnes & Noble last week, and I saw this and I just thought it was so gorgeous. It's just a leather, it's a handcrafted leather notebook from Italy. And it's just, it's gorgeous. And it's just got plain lined paper in it, but it's a lot, it's pretty thick. So I thought this could be really good as my um, makes journal. And so I'm going to go back and look at everything I've ever made because I'm pretty sure I have pictures in, in my phone, whether I ever posted them on Instagram or not. I have a record of everything. So I think I'm going to go through and try and methodically put like in order what I made, the fabric I made it with, um, the pattern I used and the fabric I used and just make a record. And that way I have all my past makes and then I will add to it every time I make something new. I just think it'll be a really cool um, memory keeper for all of the things that I make. Here's some jeans that I need to mend for my husband. Um, there is my remote control for the TV. This is a pattern piece for um, one of the Project Dressa Girl dresses. Here's one of the patterns for the Project Dressa Girl patterns and I'm gonna make one more, I haven't decided which pattern I'm gonna make yet. Then I just have this little jar with my buttons. And then this um, is again, something I saw from somebody else's sewing room tour. And all it is is two command hooks that are, they're cur uh, like curtain rod command hooks. Um, and then actually, I don't know if, the, I don't know that they're intended to be curtain rod command hooks, but that's what I'm using for. And then I just bought a curtain rod. It's an adjustable curtain rod. I bought all of it from Amazon and I'll link everything below. And then I put my tracing paper on here. So it's right over my cutting board and it works perfect. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, then underneath my table, I have this um, storage unit. I got this off Amazon as well. It looks very much like the um, ones that you see from Ikea. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I will um, definitely link to it. Um, so let's go through. So I have this pretty organized. It used to just be one hot mess. And then as I was organizing my whole room, I decided that this should also be organized because I was struggling uh, finding stuff in it. And so all I did was I bought these little plastic um, uh, cubbies, I don't know, plastic bins on Amazon so that I could organize everything in this drawer. So this is obviously my pens, my marking pens, my um, markers that I take notes with. This bin has, um, these are things that you put around um, thread spools so that the thread doesn't keep unwinding. Then I've got my empty bobbins in here. And then this drawer is tools. So I've got <laughs> my uh, chalk marker, which I just learned that I, um, if you haven't seen my community tab, um, I got several comments from people that said there was a stopper on the bottom of this cartridge, which I didn't know. And so once I pulled this out and took the stopper out, this works perfectly fine. So I will, um, I need to update that uh, Amazon worst video because this shouldn't really belong in there anymore. Um, another chalk tool, I've got a buttonhole cutter, I've got some threaders, um, my seam gauge. Yeah, so just my tools. And then here I've got a bunch of labels. So these are labels that I bought on Etsy, sewn by Michelle Sews again, sewn by Michelle Sews again, Michelle Hall handmade, 
Michelle made it. <laughs> so uh, lots of labels in here that I actually forget to put on my garments all the time. And then this is just a, a wrist pin cushion. It's a magnetic one. I've found that I don't actually care for wearing it on my wrist. So I've just left it in here and that's where I put um, uh, my uh, tapestry needles, um, darning needles, whatever you want to call them. And I keep my um, very trusty uh, safety pin there so I always know where to find it. Oh, I forgot about these labels. So back in the 80s when I was sewing the first time around, my brother designed these labels for me and it's called and it says M Michelle's designs so I still have a ton of these and um, I will probably incorporate those into some of my garments as well it's a little bit of a bigger one so um, yeah then I've got pins safety pins placement blades an extra spool for when I need to do twin needles on my machine, all my needles. So my Simflex is in here, some pattern weights that I never use because I can't get the hang of it. And then these are um, some loop turners. I haven't used those yet, but I've they apparently are excellent. On top of this is all my thread. So I've got two bins that hold all my thread. So if you watched my best of Amazon, then you'll know that I had that 40 count thread purchase and I still have the majority of those threads. Um, you can see here, some of them have been open cause they've got the little holder around to keep it from like flying open. And then some of them are still in their wrapper. So I have them separated out with the color thread in one bin. and the neutral threads in another bin. Obviously there's a lot fewer of the neutrals because I don't sew with neutrals. So those just stay up on the top. Let's see, in the second drawer I have serger thread and then I've got a bunch of nylon thread that I had bought with the intention of making that raincoat that I never made because that fabric was a nightmare. And this is where I store my bobbin threads it's just a little container that I got on Amazon and it's perfect. They just sit right in there. And then this just has various like um, stay tapes and uh, wonder tape and stuff like that. And then that's where my uh, wax tracing paper is that I use sometimes. Here's these pin these clips that I don't use. This drawer has um, all of my like Madame Sew so stuff. So you can see I've got a bias tape maker in here. I've got the ultimate presser foot set. I've got that mallet that I was again gonna use to make my vinyl raincoat, which didn't work out. I've got some extra rulers in here. These are really flimsy, cheap rulers. I got them in a set um, and I don't use them. Then I got this mini French curve and a thread crate box I don't use. I've got a grommet set in here. I've got some hook and eye closures. This is a snap set. I got a walking foot here and a rolled hem set, which I can't figure out how to use. Um, so yeah, that's just some extra stuff. And then this is just some extra stuff for my knitting. And these are some tassel and pom-pom makers. Um, I found that it's easier to just make a tassel using a book than to use this, but this is but these round ones are really good for pom-poms. And then these are some pom-poms that I bought to put on top of hats. And then this is where I keep all my manuals. That's a little shelf that my dad made. He was a woodworker. I just haven't decided where I want to put that yet. Um, and then this is just a, a shelving unit that I've got all of my Cricut um, mats on. I've got a little mini um, uh, ironing board 
And then I've got a basket with a lot of manila folders that I use to store my patterns. And then obviously a trash can. Okay, then at the end of both of my tables, there's this little pocket that came with the table. And I have um, a paper cutter stored in this one. And I don't think I have anything stored in the other one. All right, so then I come to my um, Cricut stuff. So I've got my Cricut um, Easy Press with some, you know, uh, starch and Mary Ellen's Best Press. I've got one of my magnetic pin holders there. Um, I've got some pressing mats, some various craft stuff, my pressing ham. This is the ironing mat and then I've got a Dremel this is where I keep all of my interfacing this is zippers and shoestrings and some doilies this is where I keep some bias tape and this is just um, Lint rollers, some gold grain ribbon. This is some nose gar nose things for masks. This is a big thing of bias tape. Should actually be up here. <clears throat> and I've got this pocket on the wall. It looks like an envelope. And I use that to hold whatever pattern I'm working on at the time so that it I don't have it put away but it's not in my way on my cutting table and I just have that up there with a command hook a command strip hook <clears throat> all right then I've got my Cricut maker and in these drawers is all Cricut stuff so some lots of vinyl infusible ink some of the vinyl is um, iron on some of it is heat um, so yeah printable vinyl so I can print my own there's paper some beads and stuff some socks I thought I might do something with These are just uh, stickers that you can chalk on. It's a t-shirt to do infusible ink. Okay, so now we have the pegboard. And I know there are a ton of people um, after binge watching uh, sewing, uh, tour, sewing room tours, a ton of people have pegboards in their sewing room or their craft room. And I actually um, got mine, I used um, T from Crumpets Tea and Sewing. I use her link to this product on Amazon and I will link it below in case you're interested. But it has six panels. It's super duper easy to install on the wall. Um, and mine came with all of the clips, bars, and shelves and cups that you see here. Um, so I'll just walk you through how I have mine set up. You can organize it however you want on the board and you can buy extra organizing things to put on it if you decide. So it came with these two clips. On one of them, I have a sampler of all of the stitches on my machine and I have them numbered there. And then here I have a piece of Hardanger embroidery that I made many, many moons ago that I'm proud of and love to have it hanging. Then I've got this bar that has all of my um, elastics on it. So I have this roll of quarter inch elastic that I use um, when I'm doing gathered skirts. I use the elastic method that I learned from Sam at Frugalissima. Then I have this, I think it's two inch wide elastic that I used for my Pietra pants. Um, and then I have this um, quarter inch, no, three, half inch I forget I forget how big that is that is the elastic that I use for the sleeves of my bellbird top and because I was making so many of them I went ahead and bought like a whole batch of it and in this shelf I have my um, cutting tools that I can't really hang 
well, I guess some of them I could, but it's where I have my, my rotary cutters and then my little smaller um, scissors. Oh, and then I have another little batch of elastic that wouldn't um, hang on the roll. Then I have my bigger scissors. So these are all um, paper uh, eligible cutters. These are fabric only scissors. Then I've got a shelf with my lighted uh, cutting or weeding mat for my Cricut. I actually just got this, so I haven't used it yet. And then I've got cups with all of my Cricut pens and markers. So these cups came with the um, pegboard set and this shelf came with the pegboard set, but these two cups I had already and they just happened to fit on that shelf perfectly. Um, so those are all the pens and markers that I use for my Cricut stuff. And then these are just a bunch of hooks. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff to hang on them yet, but I have my beautiful little um, wine cup marker that Heather from Textile Tailored Thoughts handmade. And she gave me this beautiful sewing themed clipboard. And then this is just a little bag with some more elastic in it that um, were scraps so they wouldn't really sit on the bar. Then we make it to the final wall. And in this corner, I have a basket with all of, um, with all knitting stuff. So I've got um, a set of interchangeable knitting needles. I've actually got two sets of interchangeable knitting needles. And so all of these um, fixed size knitting needles that I have in here, I'm probably going to donate because I'm never, I'm probably not gonna use them anymore. And I have them in this really cool, um, knitting needle holder that has the sizes at the top but it's just you slide them through and it's just like a big it's just a quagmire <laughs> and then I've got other um, knitting sundries in there and I've got some big straight needles which I never ever use because I don't like straight needles I prefer circular this bin here is really special let me see if I can get in here and show you. So this came from my mom's house when we were cleaning it out after she passed away. So this is the bin that was over in that corner. And so this has some stuff from uh, my mom's house. This is an old uh, bonnet that used to be at my grandmother's house. And when we were kids, we would play. I actually don't know. I wish I had my grandmother to ask. Because when you're a kid, you don't think to ask these things. I have no idea where this bonnet came from. I don't know if it was hers or her grand or her mother's or, but it's definitely older. I mean, it's got hand stitching in there. I don't know. I wish I knew where it came from. I can still smell the cedar from my grandmother's cedar um, chest. <laughs> then I've got a lot of pieces of um, really beautiful vintage clothing that was my mother's. This is a, a gown that she wore. It was custom made for her. My mother's mother didn't have a lot of money, but she definitely, whenever my mom had an event, she splurged and had the, she must have had like a specific seamstress that she worked with. And I mean, this is my mother's waist size. It's like from the tip of my finger to like the middle of my forearm. I'm pretty sure I measured it and it was like 20 inches. Um, actually 10 inches this way, which means 20 inches circumference. But this has had beautiful hand beading on it. Unfortunately, there's a little rip there. Um, but I have just a ton of these vintage um, handmade custom garments for my mother. Here's a cape that went with that dress. You can see where I got my love of color from. Here's a beautiful yellow, um, just, Beautiful satin yellow gown, just simple. The darts, beautiful. It's a red velvet. That must have been for like a Christmas. I'll take pictures of these hanging up and insert them um, because really obviously me doing it like this is not doing them justice. This red, lace dress is still in like pre pretty excellent condition um 
unfortunately there's nobody in my family that would fit in this um, and I know I could probably sell it but I can't I can't bear to get rid of it and then this is her uh, majorette outfit <laughs> it was surprisingly made out of corduroy and she lived on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi in high school so I'm not sure it's made out of corduroy and fully lined yeah and then there's this beautiful purple ball gown which I will hang up and show you here's just a wide view of the cubbies And you can see that the open cubbies have fabric, which you'll be seeing all that fabric in some fabric stash videos. You've, you may have already seen the knit one. Uh, not sure if the woven one will have been up by now or not. And then the bins are actually all my yarn stash. So you can see I have a lot more yarn than I do fabric. And what I did with the yarn, I used to organize my yarn by color, but that really didn't make sense because you can't, I mean, I guess you can, but typically you can't, you shouldn't mix different yarn weights in a project unless they're super close. So the um, sorting it by color really wasn't the smartest way to do it. So what I did was I went online and I found a chart that kind of identified the number of stitches and what yarn weight that um, related to. And so I bought these um, hanging um, signs to put on my bins that identified the yarn weight within the bin. So you can see here, this is yarn weight zero, it's lace weight, and you can get anywhere from 33 to 40 stitches per four inches. And you can see, this is my lightest um, bin because I don't sew with lace weight yarns very often because it takes very small needles, it's very thin thread, and it takes forever to knit. <laughs> um, then I've got one bin of yarn weight one, which is super fine and is technically fingering weight. Um, and I have, uh, this bin's not completely full, um, but you can see there's obviously lots of color in here. I love this one. Uh, this one looks similar, but it's not the same. <laughs> um, lots of variegated. I'm really excited to use this one. Look how gorgeous this is. Ooh, so pretty. Um, then I have one bin of yarn weight two, which is fine weight or sport or baby yarn. Um, again, lots of color. Whoops. One bin of yarn weight three, which is lightweight. Don't have a ton in there. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six bins of yarn weight four, which is medium worsted Aran weight yarn. And they, every one of them is packed to the gills. And mind you, this is after I've gotten rid of, I sent about three medium sized boxes of yarn to my cousin. She crochets crochets and I got rid of a lot of my lesser expensive yarns let's just say I got rid of the stuff that I basically that I bought at Joann's everything that I have left here is stuff that I bought at local yarn shops for the most part there might be one or two things that yeah these um, last two bins are impeccable yarn um, that is loop and thread which is Michael's brand and um, these are just various colors of that and my goal here is to make a seed stitch wrap um, and I thought that that uh, mixing and matching those colors would look good and then I have two bins of yarn weight five which is a bulkier yarn again lots of color uh, this was given to me it was bought in Iceland it's really a beautiful like plum um, heathered plum. It's beautiful. 
And then my uh, last three bins are yarn weight six, which is super bulky. And this, when I lived in Pennsylvania, bulky and super bulky were the mainstay of my yarn stash because I liked big needles, big thread, because stuff worked up really fast. Look how gorgeous this one is. I can't wait to use that. The one thing that I did when I was buying yarn that was a mistake is I would buy one skein of yarn, um, especially the Etsy stuff because it was so expensive, but there's not a lot I can do with only one skein. So yeah. All right. So then we come to the end here and this is just a, a basket full of uh, knitting projects. So some of them have already been started and some of them have not, but they're planned. So this one, um, you can see all the yarns are solids, but I think they're gonna mix together really well. And that's for a mystery knit along with Stephen West that starts at the beginning of October. So I've got that all ready to go. This is a vintage spool of thread that I got from Jen. Um, this little box is so cool. I don't know if you can read that, probably not, because I barely can. But it says, my great, great grandmas, my great, great grandmothers, and it's signed Carmen, and that's my grandmother. So it's my grandmother's great, great grandmother's tin. And I got this from my mother's house when we were cleaning it out after she passed away. And give me a second and I'll open it and show you what's in it. So you can see here that it's a bunch of old articles. Um, I am not sure based on some of the dates. I did go through and look at all these. The paper is super fragile, so I'm not going to go through it with you guys right now. Um, but I feel like when I looked through this, that some of the dates, I feel like it couldn't necessarily have all come from my grandmother's great great grandmother. So maybe I got, maybe the tin was hers and then somebody else in, in a later generation used it to save these clippings. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to, I have done some work on our family history. So let me, uh, I will post a date up here for the year that it would have to be from for it to be my grandmother's great, great grandmother's. <laughs> but I, but regardless of whether that's who it belonged to or not, it's definitely from an ancestor in my maternal line. And so just for that reason alone, I just thought it was super cool. Okay, so then here's some knitting bowls that I have where, you know, you put your yarn in there and let it feed out. Um, there's some yarn scraps in there, um, some yarn, um, some uh, stitch markers. This is a bracelet that you can wear that's a measuring tape that's really cool. It's made out of leather. This is just a little bin with those um, hang tags in it. This is the last cross stitch project that I have. These are the last two cross stitch projects that I have. I had a ton, I used to cross stitch a lot. And I had a ton of patterns and fabrics and threads, but I just haven't done it in so long that before we moved, I donated the vast majority of my cross stitch stuff. Um, and so I kept these two projects because um, I just, I wanted to, the, these two are special to me. So um, as I mentioned, I've done my, uh, I've been working on my mother's family history. Um, my dad has already done his side, both sides, and he's gotten back to the 1630s on his dad's side. Our first ancestor came over from England to the Boston area in the 1630s. And um, on his mother's side, the first ancestor that he was able to find was in Acadia, Nova Scotia. He was, um, they were Cajuns that were exiled from Nova Scotia down to Louisiana. And that was in the 1700s, I believe. So um, both sides of my dad's family have been here since the uh, 16, 1700s. And I've done uh, a father's tree for him. So what this, ooh. So what this pattern is, it was designed as a mother's tree. So I don't know if you can see that. It says mother's tree right here. And then the goal is to put um, the date, like you start at the bottom with 
well, actually, you start at the top with the oldest known ancestor, the year they were born, their full name, mother of, and it and it's with their um, maiden name. And then you just, it's all the way down the next, the, and this is a mother's tree. It's not a family tree. So it's a direct lineage from you all the way. So it's mother to mother to mother to mother. So there's no sisters or extra siblings on here. It's literally like a straight line. So I did the same thing for my father and I finished his because I had more information for him. So um, I'll show you a quick, I'll insert a quick picture here of my father's tree. And I actually own that now that my dad has passed, I've taken it back. Um, and um, I'm really proud. That's one of the things I've made that I'm the most proud of. And I wanna make a version for my mother. And then this is just an angel. Um, the designer is just Nan and it's called Gabriella and I just thought she was beautiful and I've already stitched one of just Nan's angels and um, I had given it to my mother and she had it hanging in her house for well ever since I gave it to her and so I have now uh, I now have possession of that one as well and I wanted to make a, um, a partner to that so that's why I kept both of these. Okay, so then I've got these two bins or baskets, I should say, that are sitting on top of my cubbies. And in this bin, I've just got empty project bags. In this bin, I have yarn scraps. And on the top, I've got the leather that I bought from Tandy Leather um, because I keep that rolled up. I wasn't, I didn't really know where else to store that. And then I've got this fun sign and you can put, you know, whatever word you want on there. I've got sewing as my therapy. Um, so that's fun to have in the background when I'm uh, filming. Then I've got my two um, boxes of patterns. So these are my indie patterns in these two bins. And then this little basket, I have my big four patterns. Since those are uh, fewer and further between, um, they fit in this little basket. I've got my tiara that I got from Stitch Treasures. She sent me for my birthday, which was super sweet. And then here I've got a neon that's multicolored and can sit in the background of my videos. So that's it guys. Okay, so that's my sewing room. Uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Is there anything that I showed you that you want more information on? Um, I will try and link most of the things that I'm able to in the description box below in case you're interested in it. Um, if you have a method of organization that's something I didn't mention, I would love to hear it because I'm always looking for um, better ways to organize um, my room. I am not a super organized person in general, but in a workspace, like at my desk at work, well now at home um, and here in my sewing room, when things are too chaotic, when things are too much of a mess, it really messes with my creative flow and I just kind of get overwhelmed and I just kind of shut down. So in order for me to really be inspired to do anything craft related, sewing, cricket, whatever, I need my space to be clean and organized and things and my tools easy to access in order for me to move forward. So I'm curious to know, are you the same way? Um, anyway, if you enjoyed this, then I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And I really appreciate you hanging out with me today, wherever you are. I hope the weather is amazing. And I hope you're able to get some sewing in.